In this session, we will discuss using the package rtrack layer to import data. rtrack layer as a package uh, provides functionality for interfacing with a genome browser, specifically the UCSC genome browser, and it's bidirectional interfacing, which means we can both take data in R and put it onto the genome browser, and we can take data from the genome browser and put it into R. In this session we'll discuss later the import of certain types of, info of data into R. Because it can access data from UCSC, it can, it can read a lot of the file formats that are traditionally associated with UCSC. Uh, examples include something like GFF format, which is sort of the genome feature format, uh, bit files, wiggle files, and big bit and big wig files. The main, re the main way you read in uh, these files into R is through the import function. And uh, the import function has a, a different, it's a method, it has different, uh, uh, um, it has different uh, 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 versions depending on what type of file you're importing. Let's start by loading up uh, our track layer. Let's look at the help for the import function. And here you see a general, uh, 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 a general help file for the import function. It tells you a little bit about what you can read in, GFF, BET, uh, BigWig, and so on and so forth. What's a little uh, confusing or a little important to pay attention to is that there's also help pages that are specific to a given format. So if I really want to know all the options for reading in a BigWig file, I look, I click here on the BigWig thing, and I uh, read about BigWig import and export. Some of these specific file formats have other options uh, to the import call. Bit files are very easy to read in. They're usually small files, uh, and they're very similar to G-Rangers. We're going to uh, do an example of reading in a BigWig file. A BigWig file you can think of as a, a, a wiggle. First, a wiggle file is a file that just contains a, some kind of signal along the genome, some kind of numeric quantity along the genome. Um, the guys, the people at UCSC realized that uh, just having a single long vector uh, that's the size of the human genome is pretty inefficient, so they constructed these new file formats called BigWig. BigWig contains a single vector across the entire genome, but it's compressed and it's easy <coughs> to extract the values for a given region. Now, let's get a BigWig file. And the way we get a big, big file or is we're going to use a, a annotation hub. We're going to return to annotation hub. And we're going to set up a hub. And uh, here's our hub as we, as we know it. And we're going to look uh, very briefly at the uh, R data class uh, slot. So this is the different types of data you can co you can connect to with annotation hub, and we can see there's ten thousand BigWig files. We also gonna <coughs> brief briefly discuss chain files. Uh, there's FASTA files, data frame, and G ranges. So there's no bit files here. Bit files are just gonna be mapped directly into G ranges. So let's take a <coughs> let's take a um, well. Let's take a, a BigWig file. Um, we're going to subset our annotation hub. Our data class should be a BigWig file. And the species should be a Homo sapiens. Okay, we need a double equals. Uh, 
and I'm just gonna get the first uh, data set in this um, <clears throat> in this um, um, in this list of big big files. I don't really care too much about what it really is. Okay, we're back. That file took a while to download. And um, let's look at what came out. Let's look at BW. BW turns out just to be a pointer down to a file. It has this weird temporary name. So let's say we want to read it. We could just say import, which would uh, really read in this entire uh, uh, big uh, uh, vector into memory. Most of the time, we're really interested in just reading in part of the file, or, or, or sometimes we're interested in reading in part of the file. And let's say we, we do that using the width argument, which is a G ranges. And let's, for example, say we just want to read in a chromosome 22. And I can never remember how big chromosome 22 is, but I know it's definitely less than uh, 10 to the 8th. So this here will basically read in all of um, uh, of the data, uh, chromosome 22, relatively fast. And we see here, we read it in as a G ranges with a lot of ranges, right? There's a third, 1.3 million ranges in this object here. We have discussed run length encoding and this here seems like it might be uh, relevant to have as a run length encoded vector. So we can use the as argument to uh, the import function and say instead of a G ranges, we want it back as a run length encoded vector. Well, perhaps I should rename it. So I get back an RLE list because I get back one uh, vector for each um, chromosome. We only read in chromosome 22, so the only thing that really matters is uh, chromosome 22, which gives us this nice uh, run length encoded vector. You can see that there's uh, again 1.4 million runs. So it's not really clear that the run length encoding is any faster, more efficient than the G ranges we had to begin with. So this is the way you read in parts of a BigWig file. Now let's discuss something slightly different. Let's discuss liftover. Liftover is a tool from UCSC that allows you to convert between, between different genome versions. And uh, we use that a lot in order to, we, we can use that, uh, 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 we, can, we can use, we can, we can do that using, uh, our liftover is provided as part of our track layer, but in order to use a liftover, we have to have something that is known as a chain file. A chain file contains information about converting one specific genome to one other specific genome. So let's, and these are accessible from annotation hub. So let's look at annotation hub. Let's say our R data class is equal to chain file. Oh, subset. And uh, in this case here, we get uh, chain files. We can recognize there's two different versions two different genomes, it's genome to genome. There's a mix of human data, and in this case we see yeast data, all the different species that we have in, uh, in UCSC. So we may want to uh, subset this here further to only uh, contain human data. And now we see a, a number of uh, different um, uh, genome versions. 
Uh, we also recognize <coughs> a couple of non-human genomes where we can lift over regions from the human genome to various uh, monkeys, for example. Now, let's get the lift liftover chain from HG18 to HG19. So let's do a query of this ahop.chain. And we're going to look for HG18. And we're going to look for HG19. And if we want to convert HG19 to HG18, we want to get the first one of these two here. So now I'm downloading it, and I have the chain. All I need now is a set of G ranges. <coughs> Let us just uh, use what we got out of the big wig before. Uh, let's uh, read it in here. Make sure we have a, a G range, it's not a big wig. So we have gr.chromosome22. And uh, we want to come. <coughs> And we want to convert that into the, and we want to convert this from HG19 to HG18. Just say lift over, and then we give it the chain. <coughs> There's really no check that the genomes are correct here. So you are really uh, trusting yourself to have done this correctly. Now, what comes out of this? Let's do a class instead of printing it. Now it turns out what comes out of this is a G-Ranges list. And the reason why it's a G-Ranges list is that each of these ranges could conceivably be split into one or more pieces when we move it from one genome to another. So the length of the G-Ranges list is the same as the length uh, of the original G ranges we we lifted over. We can ask how often did our ranges get broken up? And for that we just need to know well how long are each element in the G ranges list. So do that so let's do that with element lengths of gr.hg18 and let's do a table of this. And we see that uh, by far most of the intervals we have lifted over uh, got mapped one to one. Uh, there's 1100 intervals that we couldn't lift over from HG19 to HG18. And then there's 15 intervals that got broken up into two or three pieces. The uh, uh, the HTML page uh, associated with this session has a little bit of information about something called tabix indexing, which allows you to pass parts of certain file formats much faster. If you're in that situation, like you want to read in very big bit files or very big bit graph files, uh, I suggest you read that little section. And that covers, uh, that ends our coverage of using our track uh, layer to import data from UCSC. I have one uh, final thing I forgot to say, which is that all of this is about reading in files uh, in our R session. It's also possible to use our track layer to import tables and tracks directly from UCSC. That is very, very convenient, but it turns out that these days, most of UCSC, and I will, I'm, I'm not actually sure whether that's all of UCSC or it's just most of UCSC, is available through Annotation Hub. And that's a much easier and much more convenient interface for getting the tables and the tracks from UCSC. But if you find that there's some information that's lacking from UCSC uh, in, 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 the, in, in what you can get from Annotation Hub, you can... Uh, uh, look at the vignette for the R track layer package and see how you directly download the data from UCSC.